Hi, I'm Will from Fracture Sounds. Let's talk about legato. As you may already know, legato in the sampling world is the process of capturing not only the individual notes on an instrument, but also all of the possible intervals between each note. It's what lets us go from this to this. The way it works is, we record our friend Jamie here going from G to C, and then A flat to C, and then A to C, and every possible note going up and down to C, not forgetting the all-important C to C same note repetition. And then we do the same for all the other landing notes with and without vibrato. Inside the contact instrument, the script analyzes the incoming MIDI and decides which out of the hundreds of samples to play at any one time. But getting the most realistic legato isn't as simple as that. Let's go back to our G to C sample. Did you hear that subtle change in tone before the note change? That's the player adjusting his embouchure and air pressure in anticipation of the next note. This is an essential ingredient in any realistic legato phrase. What comes before the transition is just as important as the transition itself, and we call this pre-roll. If we cut the samples too short, yes, we hear the transition, but notice how flat and lifeless it sounds compared to this. The downside here is that if we try and play a fast passage, the transition is happening too late in the sample and we've already moved on to the next sample before we've reached the transition. Whereas if the samples are cut closer to the transition, it allows us to play fast passages convincingly. In many existing legato libraries that are out there, you're given a basic speed control like this, which you'd have to set to a fixed value or automate it manually. But in order to achieve realistic slow and fast playing on the fly, we need a way to automatically adapt the legato speed based on the speed of the incoming notes. The most simple way to do this is what I call look behind. The engine receives a new MIDI note and it looks back to see how far ago the last note was. If you've used a library that describes itself as having adaptive legato, it's pretty likely that it's doing something like this. And this is also how the classic mode works in brass band soloists. In this sequence, we have three slow notes followed by a quick run. When the player reaches the second note, the engine knows that it's been quite a long time since the first note, so it treats it like a slow legato and plays it with the full amount of pre-roll. Same with the third note, it can see that there's been enough time since the second note to treat it as a slow legato and play the full sample. All good so far, but then the next note comes up, and we can see that this note is the start of a fast run, so it should be treated as a fast legato. But the engine only knows what's already happened, not what's about to happen. So it sees that the previous note happened a while ago, so it treats this note as a slow legato. And then the next few notes happen in quick succession after the previous note, and only then does it realise that it's a fast legato phrase. Obviously this is less than ideal, because this note wasn't able to play the transition before it got interrupted by the next note. And crucially, because the speed was changing throughout this phrase, all of these notes have a different amount of pre-roll, which means they don't play in time with each other when you play against a click. To fix this, we'd have to go in and adjust the timings of each note through trial and error until it sounds like it's in time. And if you've used other legato libraries, you're probably all too familiar with this workflow. But there's a better way. Introducing Smart Legato. This mode introduces look ahead, which means it's able to look into the future and see what's about to happen as well as what's already happened. Now, of course, it can't really see into the future. So the way it achieves this is by delaying the output by a fixed amount of time. So by the time the current note has started playing, it already knows what's coming up next. On the interface, you're given a latency slider, which is controlling how far into the future the engine is listening. 
A higher value will allow the engine to see what's coming up further ahead and therefore give you a better result. The final step is to compensate for this latency using the negative track delay in your DAW. In Cubase, that's here. If you watch the main walkthrough for this library, you'll see Marcus do it in Logic. But every modern DAW has some kind of track delay feature like this. So let's go back to our example. When the playhead reaches this note, the engine's already looked ahead and can see that there's a fast run coming up. So it can adjust the timings and pre-roll of each sample to give us the optimal performance. And if we play that back with the click, you can hear that it's perfectly in time. Let's try something else. This melody is a little bit more complex with lots of intricate fast lines interspersed with the slower lines. And I also key switch to some short articulations towards the end. Everything's quantized to the grid and you can hear that the engine plays the melody perfectly in time. And crucially, all the articulations have the same amount of delay. So you can actually use multiple articulations on the same track without having to adjust the notes to compensate for the different delay times. You'll also notice that the legato notes don't actually need to overlap. As long as they're touching or have a very small gap, the engine will consider them to be connected and treat them as legato notes. And of course, this is necessary for the same note legato transitions here. In an early alpha build of this library, we simply called this mode look ahead with the view of it being an extra feature that would be used solely for playing back pre-recorded quantized MIDI. But during early testing, we actually found that it works really well for live playing too. For me, the default latency of 150 milliseconds feels perfectly comfortable under the fingers. And if you're a seasoned composer who's used to playing legato libraries, then playing slightly ahead of the beat is probably second nature. And there's one last control that I need to mention, and it's this delay CC. Now, because we're delaying the output of the MIDI notes, if we want our CC data, as in our Dynamics mod wheel data, to align with the MIDI notes, we also need to delay the CC by the same amount of time. The reason it's turned off by default is that it feels weird for the CC data to be delayed when you're playing it in live, even though the notes themselves are delayed. For some reason, having latency on the mod wheel just feels weird. So yeah, if you're playing in live, you might prefer to have this option turned off. But if everything is quantized to the grid and you're playing back, then it's worth turning it on. We also found that some DAWs behave a little bit differently regarding CC data and the track delay. So Cubase and Logic both apply the same negative track delay to the CC data as they do to the notes, but Reaper doesn't. So if you're composing in Reaper for some reason, you would turn delay CC data off. But if you're composing in Cubase or Logic, you can have that turned on. So by now you're probably wondering, why did we even include Classic Mode if Smart Mode is so much better? Well, two main reasons. Firstly, Classic Mode gives you the minimum possible latency for any given legato speed. So if you play a quick line, it feels snappy under the fingers. And you might prefer this kind of response, even if it means the latency isn't consistent. And secondly, because Classic Mode is using a more basic legato engine, we were able to add a few quality of life features that didn't make it into Smart Mode. The first of which is release re-triggering. If you release the current note while a previous note is still held, the previous note will be re-triggered. And that lets you do stuff like this. And lastly, classic mode supports the use of a sustain pedal. So hopefully you've learned something new about Legato today. Sorry if it's been a bit technical, I'm a bit of a legato nerd, as you can probably tell. And if you already own Brass Band Soloists, I hope this will have helped you get the best out of the library. If you haven't already checked out the library and you like the sound of it, be sure to watch Marcus's main walkthrough for a full overview of all the content in the library. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with our future videos. That's it from me, see you next time.